proliferation and scatter diagrams. Now the purpose of the topic or what the topic is about or what we are going to be doing in this topic is simply awarding the position to different values in a given set of values. For example, if uh, I'm given the max which students got around 10 students of math in 5P, if I consider max of 10 of 5 students in max and 10p in test so we shall have our table we have the student we have max then we can have 10 and if I look at uh, I might have student A student B student C, B, and E. This student here might get in math 8, and then in chemistry he gets 57 here. Another student gets 70 here, and in math he gets maybe 56 here in chemistry. He comes here with 67, this person is so good in chemistry. And when this person comes in, he says, ah, from here we get a hundred in math, 85 in chemistry. And this last person says, math is hard, 50, chemistry, 45. Now, when given such marks, what this topic is going to guide you or teach you what to do about the marks is to determine how these marks are related or how the performance of these students are related what we call the correlation, the relationship between the performance. And we normally go ahead after awarding values. Now in this topic we are saying what we do, we are going to award the position which we call ranks. For example, when I look at math, we can come and rank without changing position. Student A remains here. We shall have a student B is 70, have a student C is 67, then we have a student D is 100, and last the student C is 60. Now, who is the best? 100. This 100 becomes number one. Then who is the second? 80. 80 becomes number two. Who is the third? 78. 70 becomes number 3. Who is the fourth? 67. 67. Number 4. Who becomes the last one? The fifth. And that is what they call ranking. When you do that, we say you have ranked what? Values. Ranking, you don't change. It's not like in your football regions where you have to change. Uh, the one who has more points becomes the top of the table here. You don't reposition. This person remains in position 1. But when we rank, this one in the position of four becomes the number one. So when they tell you to rank, first of all, what we are going to consider, don't change the position of the values. Don't write this one first. So this becomes the rank for math. Then we can have our chemistry here. Chemistry and then we also rank it. For chemistry, this person who has 8, he has 57. And when we go to chemistry, this one has 56. This one has 78. This one has 85. And lastly, this one has 48. So in chemistry, when you rank, who is number one? 85. 85 is still number one. Who is number two? 78. 78 becomes number two. Who is number three? 57. 57 becomes number 3. Who is number 4? 56. 56. 56 becomes number 4 and then this one becomes number yeah. So that is what ranking is all about. So when you are given values like this in the max, you are told to rank. That is what you want you to, to do.
Now, after ranking, this topic goes ahead, tells you to determine what to call the relationship. How are these, these ranks similar? You realize it is not a guarantee that number one here is still number one here. In this case, this one is the same, but you realize when we go to this person who is number four here, in this case is number two. two. So the relationship is not going to be the same, that who will be number one in math will still be number one in chemistry, who will be number two in, in chemistry, or number three in math will be number three. Here we have number three in math becoming number four in chemistry. So when ranking, this topic requires you first rank the values. The topic we are saying is about awarding position to a particular value in a set of values without rearranging. So don't rearrange, don't rearrange your values. Now after there, we compare. Aim number two, you have to compare, determine the relationship between the ranks of values corresponding to a particular parameter. In this case, we are using chemistry and math, but I have given an example. It can also be math and physics. physics when you have a particular set of values of max for math and max for physics. For physics. Now, after there, we have to we'll go ahead. After comparing, now we have seen that number two here is number three here. Number three here is number four. Number four here is number two. We we'll go ahead and we have to determine what we call a correlation coefficient. Now, to determine what we call a correlation coefficient, a correlation coefficient is the value which shows the relationship. In math, we define the relationship depending on what? On a particular value. Now, we want to go ahead and calculate what we call the correlation coefficient after knowing how to do it. Now, we are going to determine the relationship. Is the ranking okay? Yes. So, after ranking, we go ahead to determine the correlation coefficient. Our next subreading, I hope I can take a note as we do. Our next subreading will be determining the correlation coefficient. We will draw the table. Draw the table. Draw the table. Go to determine the correlation coefficient. Determining correlation coefficient. Correlation coefficient. We want to see after here <coughs> we have learned how to run. What do we do? We have had our ranking map. We have rank a math and we have rank a chemistry. In math, our number one here, the first person is number two, according to position, number three. Then we have uh, number four. Then we have uh, number one. Also, we have number five. I hope you understand this. Yes. Then lastly, we shall have our rank in chemistry. This one is number three. Who was the first one? Then we have number four, number two, number one, number five. So after ranking, the next step we are saying, according to the aim of the topic, we must determine a value which we call the correlation coefficient. And now it's what we are going to do. So to determine the correlation coefficient, what you do, the steps, there are two types of correlation coefficients. We have the one which is called the candle. And then another one, which is called the Spearman's rank correlation coefficient. Now, to determine, you are not restricted, and our focus here is going to be on determining or calculating the Spearman's rank correlation coefficient. After ranking, we calculate Spearman's rank correlation coefficient. Now, Spearman was a scientist. He generated a formula to calculate his coefficient. So, for us, our work is easy. It's simply to follow his formula and we get the answer. We don't need to derive. In this applied math, some formulas we just what? Yes. Apply. So what we are going to do, 
to determine spearman's run correlation coefficient. His formula is also in the log table given by our coefficient will be given by 1 minus 6 and the total of summation b squared n into n squared minus 1. Where our d is the difference between ranks difference between ranks and then our n is the number of pairs so what we need in order to calculate to calculate the correlation correlation coefficient first of all we need the difference between the ranks which we can get by simply saying our difference between the ranks is given by d can equal to rank and mass and as ranking so difference means subtraction also yes so we are going to subtract we shall have 2 minus 3, we get negative 1. Mm. 3 minus 4. Negative 1. 4 minus 2. 2. two. Then 1 minus 1. 0. zero. 5 minus 5. Zero. 0. So, but they want summation d squared. So we can get the d squared now. Which we can write here. Our d squared. Negative 1 squared, we get? 1. Negative 1 squared? 1. 2 squared? 4. And then it's zero and what? Zero. So we get our summation d squared as is what? By six. Is six. So after there we have our d in this case our d is going to be an error of Yes, yes. our d we have said to get the correlation coefficient we shall have our stigma being equal to 1 minus 6 and the summation d squared over n into n squared minus 1 and we are saying d is difference between ranks which we have determined squared and got the total as 6 then n is number of pairs in this case our pairs and we look at our data we had a pair. We had how many pairs? How many pairs? You have forgotten. So we had our max. Let us go back to the table, which was our illustration. We had the ten. We had the mass, and then we had the k. So the first person in the mass had eight. Then in ten, seven. Fifty-seven. Mm-hmm. Seventy. Seventy. Fifty-six. Mm -hmm. 67, 67, 78, 78, 100, 100, 85, 85, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, is that clear? Yes. So, how many pairs do we have now? Five. 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 What we are going to do is to come and say, shall have this as one minus six, and is six, which is the summation of this squared over five, into five squared minus one. And this gives us, use your calculator and give me the answer. Are you up? This is 36, we have 1 minus 36 over 5 and 24, and we get the answer. Seven out of eight. Seven hmm? out of eight. You have what? 7 out of 8. You mean the small? The small, 0 0.7. Is that what you have? Hmm? Hmm? Hmm, 0 0.7. So this becomes our correlation coefficient. 
Yes, is there a situation eh? mm. when one person bid on one paper? That means his mark in the other paper will be zero. Mm -hmm. Is it okay with the determining correlation coefficient? Yes. Okay. So we want to move on to example two. To determine the correlation coefficient, then lastly we shall learn how to comment and that will be correlation.